Here's Marduk, the chief god of Babylon. Uh, and here you can see his uh, fire-breathing dragons. Uh, fire-breathing dragon. Okay. How, m how many believe in fire-breathing dragons? Okay, I see your hands. One. Okay. We've got to stop here a minute. <clears throat> Has anybody ever seen or heard of an animal called the bombardier beetle? The one that can set off 200 explosions per second and scare off the frog that's ready to eat them. Uh, can I see your hands? Okay. Um, has anybody ever heard of an electric eel that can generate 600 volts of electricity that when you're swimming, you step on the electric eel and he can shock you and make you wish you hadn't gone swimming that day? Anybody ever hear of the electric eel? Has anybody ever seen in his lifetime an animal called the firefly or lightning bug? That's the one that's got a flashlight on its tail that points to where it's been. I don't know why. But about every night in the summertime, about the time it gets dark, you see the woods full of them. How many of you ever saw lightning bugs? Okay, how many have ever seen cows? Cows that eat green grass. Do you know how would you feel at the end of a day if you had been eating green grass all day? I think I would do just like cows do, and I think I would belch up methane gas like they do. You know cows belch methane gas, don't you? Isn't methane gas just like propane and butane? Isn't it a flammable gas? Hmm. How many believe cows can belch methane gas as a byproduct of eating grass? See your hands? How many believe that you serve a God that is capable of creating an animal that can set off 200 explosions per second, that can generate uh, 600 volts of electricity in the electric eel, that can uh, uh, put a flashlight on the back end of a, a little firefly, and who can create a cow that belches methane flammable gas. How many believe that your God is capable of putting something in the animal's mouth that can set off that flammable gas, uh, uh, like a spark plug, and make it explode. Can I see your hands? If you all vote for it, we won't be here all night, because if I have to tell this whole story again, I need everybody to vote. Yes, okay, got it. It's critically important. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. You see, it is Isaiah, who I think it was in chapter 9, said, there is a Savior coming. Ooh, oh, okay. There's a Savior coming. That's really good to hear. Um, er, uh, Wait a minute, but does Isaiah tell fairy tales? Here, I have to defend my scripture. What did Paul do when he went to some place? He argued, uh, reasoned with the brethren about the reasonableness of his position. And we need to be able to defend our faith and here is Isaiah talking about a fiery flying serpent. Well, if I do not believe in fiery flying serpents and the reasonableness of their existence at the time of Isaiah, I'm going to have trouble defending Isaiah's statements about my Savior. So it is critically important that we teach our kids science in our Sunday schools because they're not getting the right science in the government schools. Isaiah 9.6. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. If I do not believe this verse in Isaiah, I have no greater reason to believe this one. Quite frankly, it is easier for me to believe in a fiery flying serpent than the prediction of somebody a thousand or two thousand years later being born to save me. It is crucial that we take scripture literally. Out of his, Leviathan's mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals and a flame goeth out of his mouth. This is the way it reads in your Bible. Except. No human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Hmm. The guy must not have read the Bible. The ancient city of Babylon uh, in its walls uh, recently excavated many images of dragons in the walls. Why? Maybe it's because people were familiar with dragons at the time. Stop that talking! Stop that talking! This has been an obnoxious cat production. 